Hello everyone and welcome to a new vlog. This will be vlog five. I'm going to be doing a little sculpt molding, which isn't really quite what we're going to be using, but you get the idea. This is paper mache clay crete. Had this for a few years. I noticed the price has gone up. This was $6.99 when I bought it. <clears throat> I know the price has gone up a little bit on that. So I got my gloves on, as you can see. The 88 cent container, Walmart container. We're going to be mixing this in. Got my MRE military ration spoon right here. We'll be using to shape it with, of course, the paper mache, my water, and of course, we've got the brown paint. Now, this stuff has hardeners in it already. So even though this tempera stuff is washable, it's basically like just adding water to this. So the hardener is in here. This will dry and be hard just fine. You can also use, I, I have used in the past, you can also use household paint, like the $5 gallons of paint. You find a brown, mix it in here, but we're going to be doing that so that we get a coloring, a dirt coloring already. This is going to be what we're going to use to fill in the foam that we did on the last video. And then going over this will be possibly some plaster cloth if we have to, but we'll most likely just go over it once it's hardened up with some of this patching stuff right here. So I tried the vinyl stuff and I didn't really like the way the vinyl stuff because I couldn't really get it to sand very well. You can see some right there. The vinyl patching stuff I didn't really care for. So um, I've always got uh, the Woodland Sink Sculpt Mold stuff as well. Um, we may use that too. Um, I don't know for sure how much of this combination of stuff we're going to end up using, but this is going to be the base coat for everything. And who, who knows, that may be enough. I don't know, we'll see. All right, so let's go ahead get everything taken out of the bag here. Now you don't have to wear gloves because this is just paper paper pulp with a little bit of add additive in it to make it harden up with water. But I'm just doing it so I don't have as much of an issue washing my hands later on trying to get the paint out of my hands. Now I've shown, I think I showed this before on my YouTube channel years ago. I was doing some HO stuff called this, um, oh, I can't remember what I called it now. Eh, it doesn't really matter what I called it. This is almost like cellulose insulation. Uh, might be smart to wear a mask, but I don't have a mask right now. And I'm not, I'm trying not to stir this up too much here. Okay, so that should be good enough to start out with here. <clears throat> so I'm going to add a little bit of water to this. Now the consistency of this is going to be completely personal preference. Do you want it to be nice and super thick? Or are you going to want it to be kind of a little bit runny? It's all personal preference and it's all based on what exactly you're doing. What you will be using it for now since i'm going to be stuffing this into places i probably want this to be a little bit of a thick consistency and of course you can always add more pulp paper pulp as they call this later on it's like cottage cheese right now scenic mud i think is what this technique is called. Um, there's a few different ways to make scenic mud. Some people actually put dirt in here too. <clears throat> I don't know if any of that's necessary, but... But it's, uh... It's, it's moist, but it's, uh... It, it holds its shape, so, and it'll give a nice texture to the uh, to the scenery. So we're going to mix up some brown paint here. Probably can use just the brown paint by itself, but this particular brown paint, it's just called brown. 
but I, found, I thought this was had a very uh, distinct uh, dark earth uh, color to it, more so than other browns I looked, looked at had. But this will give us our... Uh, then we want to paint this later. See, that's what we're doing here. We're, we're combining several steps into one. And I suppose you could probably put green paint in here if you wanted your underlayment to already be green. But typically most people do brown underlayment and then put your green scenery on top of that. And of course if we go back and paint over this later too, a different shade of brown. But now the more water we add, the longer it's going to take to dry. That's always another trick. And uh, if you're worried about it being hard, I mean this stuff has hardeners in it, but you could add some plaster, plaster to this if you wanted to. There we go. It's kind of a light brown right now. I probably could have just used paint for this, honestly, but which I have done in the past. Just used the brown paint since it's got the water in it, obviously. See, this is, this is the modeler's recipe right here. We don't bake cookies, but it's, uh, it's almost like, um, um, well, now it's a little bit runnier, but it's, it's uh, kind of the consistency of a hamburger. <laughs> That's what it kind of feels like to me. It's like uh, mixing some uh, hamburger to make a meatloaf is what we're, this kind of reminds me of. So anyway, I'm going to continue to do this, and then we'll jump to my actually applying it. Okay, so we're ready to apply it here. So we'll just go ahead and smear it like cottage cheese here. Just build that right up to the to the road bed there that I've laid for the the eventually for the track to lay on there. But you can kind of get in there with your fingers and kind of make that whatever kind of uh, scenery you want to make it, however rough or smooth you want to make that. You can do that now while you're doing this. Now this isn't necessarily something that you're going to get done in 10 minutes. But, I mean, it could take a while to get done, is what I'm saying, if you really go back and tediously pack it in here and stuff like that. But it'll allow you to shape the scenery as you go along. And, you know, when you run out, you just make more. Not that big of a deal. Now, we may not even have to use the MRE-approved uh, or included spoon there. We may not have to even use that at all. But if we blend this down into the seat into the ground here, then we probably won't even have to use plaster to cover over this later on. You can decide obviously how far out you want that to go. Like I said, I'm just building it up right there. Now I've got hot glue along here to hold that cork down. Okay, that looks looking pretty good. Um, I don't think I recorded it for the last video for this video, but um, I'll probably show this on the next video when I'm doing this on the rest of the layout. But this is cork that is uh, duck brand cork, so it's got an adhesive back duct tape. It's the same company that makes duct tape. Quack, quack duct tape. 
And I found this at Hobby Lobby this summer. They had them on clearance for two bucks a roll. Normal price was like nine bucks or eight bucks, something like that. And it's about, I don't know, that inch, that many, <laughs> that many finger width wide there, I guess. So I took that and used that to cover the Woodland Scenics riser here so it's nice and perfectly flat and smooth there. Okay, and then what I did on the seams is I smeared a little hot glue on the seams here and on the edges here and here just to kind of help it maybe hold down in case I wasn't sure if the adhesive, which uh, seems pretty tacky actually, I wasn't sure if that would be enough, but that's what I used for this if you're wondering is the duct tape, quack quack duct tape cork adhesive roll. And I'll show that in the next video, but just kind of a that's why that's there kind of a thing. So I'm going to go ahead and do some more of this here. And we'll come back in a little bit. Okay, so I've used up that mixture that I had mixed up earlier there. As you can see, you can get some pretty nice textures in there too. I did go ahead and use a spoon a little bit down here to kind of help clean this off around this edge right here. But other than that, I just pretty much used my finger. I used the edge of the spoon right in here to kind of gouge these lines in here a little bit. But fingernail also worked pretty good too. So as you can see, it's still wet, but it, 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 it clings. It, it clings very well. And so you can get your texturing for your hillside or, you know, stone, rock, whatever. You can get that in there now. And it's still wet, but it, like I said, it clings. It's Unless you put too much water in there, then you're going to have a soup bath. But as long as you keep it thick enough, then you can just fling it on there and kind of mold it to the way you want to. Now this I'm kind of leaving as more of just kind of a sloping dirt thing, so this is a lot smoother down here. Um, once this dries, uh, come back and uh, sand it a little bit smoother. Um, <clears throat> I've got the... Uh, um, over here I've got the switch on this side of the layout. Basically the plan for all this hasn't changed with the way I showed it um, a couple videos ago with the track layout. All I'm doing is just doing the scenery and then we're doing code 55. So the track is still going to come off that switch over here and come over to here. So none of this scenery is really going to be an, an impact for that. Um, and that's what I planned on. I still got to do, obviously, that area right there. I've got to mix up some more paper and mache. And I've got a lot of filling in up here to do still. And I may not even bother with that. I may use the cor the uh, adhesive cork stuff here. The duct tape brand cork. Over here is where the, this is the highway or the road or whatever it's going to be. I want to have a little bridge coming over. Just move that a little bit more. There we go. I want to have a bridge coming over here. Probably a Rick's Products bridge. And I may 3D print. I still haven't decided on that. But what I need to do over here is I do need to create kind of a slope downward um, and just kind of sc sculpt this down a little bit here. Not going to be too terribly crazy um, how it looks because it's going to be under the, the Rick's bridge. That's how I'm doing this. And if you want to give this a try yourself, go right ahead. It's easy to do. And uh, you can always go back later on and do some more sculpting with plaster, put some plaster over this, some rocks. If you got some woodland scenic rocks or some rocks you made on your own that you want to put in here, this would be a good time to do it. You could embed it in there and you get that nice effect of the dirt being around the rock, the rock protruding through the, through the dirt there. But I'm not going to do that simply because uh, I'm a little tight on clearance as it is right here because I'm going to have two tracks going through here. So I'm, I'm trying to keep this to a minimum uh, as far as uh, things coming out of the wall here. This is very, very thin coat along here. Um, so I don't want the locomotives or the rolling stock to come sliding and hitting up against here and things like that. So anyway, so thank you very much for watching this video on how to use 
modeling mud with paper mache and paint mixed together to create scenery.